overcoming obstacles to corporate success. Many companies fail to realize their full potential and continue in long-term growth because they fail to take into account the corporate life cycle. Just as human beings have a life cycle, so do corporates. So I'm going to take you through each step of the corporate life cycle so that you can see where your company is on the cycle at the moment, what particular obstacles or challenges you are facing, and I also hope to tell you what to do about overcoming those obstacles and challenges. So the first step in the life cycle is brainchild. In other words, the founder or founders decide to start a company to meet a particular need in the marketplace. The next step is birth. The organization or the company is given birth to, it becomes a legal entity, and from then on, of course, it is actually in business. And at this stage of birth, there is a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement. However, that can very quickly wear off as the company moves into infancy, and it becomes apparent that it is cash short, it's short of other resources such as people, material resources, system resources, products perhaps, and it is short of customers. So its income streams are very fragile and at this stage it needs a lot of tender care and loving to get it through to the next stage which is what we call toddler. Now at toddler the company begins to make profit, it begins to grow, it begins to take on new customers and it begins to succeed in a really proper way. The trouble is, of course, those people that built the company so far then try and expand, and perhaps expand too quickly, and the company goes into a stage of overtrading. In other words, it's taking on far too much work and far too many sales and far too many customers without the infrastructure to support it. So it moves on into adolescent. And at the adolescent stage, the company practically goes into civil war. In other words, the people that founded the company, the entrepreneurs, the marketeers, the salespeople, come into a direct conflict with the professional managers that are brought in to put in place the right infrastructure, the processes, the policies, the systems, the structures of the organization that are needed for it to run smoothly and successfully and above all, cost effectively. Once you've got yourself through the adolescent stage, you then move into prime. At this stage, the company is mature, it's successful, it is growing, it's succeeding, and it's as though the directors feel that they actually hit the formula for never-ending success. The problem is, competitors have their eye on the company and are perhaps beginning to creep up on it, the marketplace is changing, and unless the company regenerates and reinvents itself with new products and services, new channels to market, new income streams, the problem is it may start to go into decline. If it does go into regeneration and reinvention, then the first steps of the corporate life cycle play a part here as well. And it's as though you're starting a new business with the brainchild and the birth and the infancy and the toddler, although hopefully not the adolescent piece. However, complacent organizations take their eye off the ball, they fail to regenerate, they fail to reinvent themselves, and the first step is they go into bureaucracy. In other words, internal focus takes over from external focus, internal politics become the thing most talked about, power plays, structure changes, system changes. It's as though the people that were brought in to build the infrastructure now have too big a hold on the company and it's losing its entrepreneurial flair. If this isn't attended to, then the company goes into early decline. It begins to lose big customers, it begins to lose income, and it may even begin to show some losses. And so the company makes people redundant, it cuts costs, it lays people off and closes down parts of the business in the hope that they'll stop this uh, continuance, if you like, of decline. Very often that doesn't happen because they've lost touch with the marketplace and the next step is early decline. And this is where the organization is really beginning to get into severe trouble. And leading from that, it goes into terminal illness. Profits are failing to appear, losses mount. And unless the company cuts across from this stage to the early stages 
of the corporate life cycle and comes back to toddler, adolescence and climbs back up to prime, it will continue to go towards failure. And finally, the management consultants brought in to try and rescue the company send in their bill and their bill finishes off the company for good. Death is the result. So what is the message? The message is simply this. It is not inevitable that a company needs to go from brainchild to death. For sustainable long-term profitable growth, when it gets to prime, it needs to keep reinventing and regenerating itself. If it goes beyond prime and starts to go into decline, it can still get out of the problems and the situation if it takes on board the need for real drastic change and reinventing itself by coming back to the early parts of the corporate life cycle and really taking on board the challenges as though it were a new company.